Welcome to section 5.3, an application of exponents, scientific notation. Now, this is used a lot in the sciences because scientists tend to deal with really, really big numbers and really, really small numbers. And if you have a whole bunch of zeros in there, it's easy to miscount. You leave off a zero, add an extra zero in, and you're off by a factor of 10, which is huge. So scientists developed a notation that would help reduce those kinds of mistakes. What we're going to talk about now is to convert larger numbers into scientific notation. What we want to do is we always want to rewrite these numbers so that there is only one digit in front of the decimal point, and that digit has to be something other than a zero. Okay? Now right here, my decimal point is understood to be right there. We're going to move this decimal point all the way over between the first nine and the second nine. So what we have is 9.994. Now all the rest of these zeros, they don't mean anything on the right-hand side of a decimal point, so we can just, just drop them off. Now this is definitely not the same thing, so we have to put in an adjustment. We always do times 10 to some power. Now I'm not going to worry about the power just yet. What I want to point out is that this is the only time in algebra that we still use the x for multiplication. So you're just not going to see a dot here. Okay. Now, what do we need to do to figure out what that exponent needs to be? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to count how many places we moved that decimal point. So we've moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 spots. So that's going to be either a 9 or a negative 9. Okay, so right now I've got the 9. I just need to decide on the sign now. Now, you may have learned this before where if you move the decimal point to the left, it's going to be positive. If you move it to the right, it's going to be negative. And then, but then when you go to convert backwards, you've got to remember that it's backwards. I suggest just learning that thinking I need to change this back into this. This number is a lot smaller than this one, so I need to be making it bigger. This adjustment should be making it bigger. If the adjustment needs to be making it bigger, it's a positive exponent, okay? Now your calculators, they have right here, on this calculator is times 10 to the n. I could enter 9.994 hit that button, it's going to go times 10 to the, and I put in 9, and I can check to see that it's correct. On the calculators we have in the classroom, it's really hard to see, but right here, there's an EE button, and that does exactly what that times 10 to the N button did here. It would work exactly the same way. So you can use that to check. Okay? For this one, I want to take this decimal point and I need to move it so that I have one number in front that's not a zero, which means I need to move it all the way over to here. So this becomes simply four times, it's always 10 to some power. How many places did I move it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. To go from four to this, I need to be making it smaller. So I do a negative 7 exponent. For this one, my decimal point is here. I want to move it so that there's one number in front that's not a 0. So I'm going to move it all the way over to here. So this is 7.833 times 10, I've moved it one, two, three, four spots. This is smaller than this, so this needs to be making it bigger, so I use a positive exponent. For this one, first of all, this is a negative number, this is still a negative number. We are transforming the number, not changing the number. So carry over the negative, and then you can just pretend it's not there, you've already taken care of it. I need to move this decimal point between the 5 and the 7. So I have the negative 5.78 times 10 
I've moved it one, two, three, four, five spots. Remember, we get to pretty much ignore the negative now. I need to be making this thing smaller, so it's negative five. 